Hi everybody, Vigorous Raps Galleon here with a new tutorial series. Now, some of you have probably seen my tutorial series on the uh, Rec Room chip system. I had a lot of fun making those, but it gets to a certain level of complexity where you may as well be using an actual uh, production suite. So, I decided to start a series on Unity. Uh, what I want to do in this series is I want to explore a lot of different game mechanics, uh, how their implementation works, in coding, how to tweak them to make them do the things that you would like them to do in your game, and how they affect the gameplay and flow of a game. So I'm definitely looking for suggestions, anything that you would like to know how to do in VR, something you're trying to implement in your project, please let me know in the comments, or just anything you would be fun to set up. I'd also like to do some simulations in this uh, channel rather than just games. So anything you'd sort of like to see demonstrated that might be good for VR, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. Now, what we're going to be doing today is showing you how to set up your basic world for VR. So what you're going to be able to do is move around, interact with things using your hands with a uh, location-based grab system, uh, and have a world to look around it and make sure that all of the graphics are set up basically to streamline your production process and make sure that nothing looks funky or choppy. So nothing I'm going to be doing today is really novel information. Uh, you can find a couple of different guys have done a tutorial on how to set up, uh, how to set this up. This one's going to be closest to the setup that Valen does. I do a few things a little differently than he does, but I'm still going to put a link to his channel because uh, he's an excellent tutorial maker. He's got a lot of stuff on Unity, so you should definitely check him out. Um, but I'm going to be doing a couple of things just slightly different. So if you're going to be following along with the series, you're going to want to set it up how I'm setting it up. Okay, so we've got our basic Unity blank canvas here. Uh, that's great. We've just got a skybox. And the first thing we're going to want to do is get the uh, Oculus implementation into our scene. So to do that, you're going to go to the Asset Store. You're going to wait for it to load. Sorry, my internet's a little slow this morning. There we are, and just go ahead and search Oculus. You can also search Oculus integration, something like that, but it's the most downloaded package with that keyword, so it will pop up first. Go ahead and import that into your project. You're gonna have to download it if you've never used it before. Uh, and I'll just skip ahead through this part because this will take a couple of minutes. You're going to get this screen while you're importing. Go ahead and import everything. I will not be using all of this in this video. I'll be using very little of it. However, um, you're going to want to import the entire package. A lot of the scripts in there are going to rely on references to other scripts. So just go ahead and do the whole thing. I'm also probably going to be using a lot of these assets later on in the video. So once again, if you want to follow along, go ahead and import the whole thing. Once you've got the package imported, you'll probably see this message here asking you to update to a newer OVR plugin. Go ahead and do that. And it's going to ask you to restart. It's also going to ask you to upgrade your spatializer, most likely. Go ahead and do that as well. And then the project will restart. So as you can see, we've got our uh, Oculus integration in the scene now. I've also got a materials folder here that we're going to use in a second. So this is everything we just downloaded and imported. Let's take a look at the scene. We've got a main camera in the scene already, but this is not an OVR camera. It's just a normal camera. Uh, the VR cameras are OVR cameras, but rather than messing around with one of those, let's just go ahead and get an OVR player controller into our scene. It's a nice little prefab provided by Oculus uh, that gives you everything you need to be dangerous uh, when it comes to moving around your scene. Uh, it's mainly made more for uh, experience sort of things. There's no hands built in. It's just a way to move around coupled with a capsule collider that you could use to get hits on or uh, look for collisions with your player. Uh, the only issue with that capsule collider is it does not follow the OVR camera rig, so we're going to need to set that up. First thing you want to do is set the OVR camera rig to a floor level. So that's going to make the tracking uh, based on the floor height you have set in your Oculus system. Uh, then we're going to want to go to the player controller here and add a character camera constraint. What this is going to do is make the capsule collider follow the camera around, uh, which we definitely want. So you're going to need to put a reference to the camera rig, which is this one right here, into this script under the uh, ca uh, camera rig section here. Uh, so that's all great, but we have nothing to move around on. Our OVR player controller is just kind of sitting in space. So that's no good. Let's get ourselves a floor. Gonna go ahead and get a plane. Now let's put that at origin. 
Now, even at Origin, it looks like it's intersecting our OVR player controller. That's because the player controller is two Unity units high, and it's only one Unity unit sticking out of the ground. So if we move it up to one Unity unit, it'll be lying just on top of our plane. Let's also make our plane a little bit bigger. Let's scale that up on the X and Z. So it was a 10 by 10 plane. Now it's 100 by 100. That should be plenty of room, more than we need. Uh, one convenient thing about Unity and scaling things so they look right in VR is one Unity unit is equal to one meter. Now, that's really awesome because, let's say you make a cube, a cube is just one Unity unit uh, squared, and it is indeed one square meter in the world. Makes it super easy to set stuff up. So we're going to get a cube in there just so we have something to contrast a little. Let's move that up to 0.5 so it's sitting on top of the world. It's pretty hard to see out there, as you can see in our camera preview. So let's go to those materials. I made a little concrete material, and let's apply that to our plane. Set it. There we go. So there's a nice gray material. Uh, then let's also make the cube a new color. Let's make it a nice pimp daddy purple. Grab that there. That's more of a Barney purple. We want a, a big pimp in purple be a little darker that's it that's the right one let's go ahead and grab that and apply it to our cube now we've got a good contrast let's hop in and see what we can do so far okay so we've got our big purple cube in front of us our we're snap turning right now which you can adjust in that script uh, in the inspector actually just by clicking a box if you prefer smooth turning we can move around with the left stick we can strafe with the left stick we can also sprint I think it basically is like 1.5 the times the movement speed just by pressing the trigger button. However, we have no presence in this scene. Um, we don't exist from the scene's point of view as far as our hands and things like that. There's no way to interact with this cube in front of me. So let's get some hands and get some interaction scripts going. So we're going to be used direct grabbing hands. Uh, there is a distance grabber that comes with uh, the Oculus integration. However, I don't really like the way that they have it set up straight from Oculus, so I'll be doing a custom script in a future video to show you how to do distance grabbing. Uh, for now, we're just going to use the custom hands that come with Unity. Pretty simple, put them outside of the hierarchy. Uh, let's go ahead and move this around now so they're closer to our player controller. And you could create a uh, controllers folder to keep that all sort of organized. I won't for now. So what do we need to do with this? Very little. It just needs a reference to its tracking space, which is the tracking space in our player controller. You need to set that for both of them. So now I have some hands. Uh, however, we can't just grab this cube automatically, otherwise the player could grab anything in the scene. That wouldn't be very good. It also is going to need a rigid body so that it can interact with the physics system in the world, and it's going to need a OVR grabbable script. So now we should be able to pick that bad boy up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and allow offhand gra a grab, but you can set it if, say, you want to have a gun that's only for uh, the primary hand. You can turn that off with a little checkbox there. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like now that we have hands. Very nice. You can see our hands are moving and grooving in the world here. Let's go ahead and try and grab this box. See it very easy. And that's great, but uh, you probably noticed my hands are really stuttering around here, and uh, you probably noticed most games uh, do not do that. Let's also take a look at the box here. The box looks alright, so why are my hands so messed up? Well, it's pretty simple. The position of the hands is being checked in fixed update and the physics steps. So we need to change our physics steps so that it's being updated once every 90th of second, once the, rather than once every 60th. As well as that, uh, depending on what sort of computer you're using, you might want to scale down the graphics to this, especially if you're just making a simple, low-poly game. If you're just working on something, you don't want it to be really choppy all the time, so there's no reason not to turn the graphics down while you're working on the project. So I'm going to show you how to do that, too. Okay, the last thing we need to do to get this setup all fixed up is to change a few things in our project settings. Now, we want to switch up the time step so that it is uh, optimized for 90ths of a second. So put the fixed time step at 1 divided by 90. Unity will automatically do the decimal for that. Then you're going to want to go to quality here. 
and uh, I had it set for Ultra a second ago, I just changed it. So you just highlight whichever one you want, and that will be the one that is used for your game setting. Now watch the cube here as I click on different ones. You can see the shadow gets blurrier there, and then the outlines get a little different, then you get these sort of boxy shadows. Low, no shadows at all, very low. For this, there's not enough shaders to tell the difference, but it does look different. Um, so I like to test on medium if I'm doing a pretty complex project. Uh, you always should test on ultra at some point, but if you're going back and forth into the game mode quite a bit, I like to set it for medium. It makes everything load pretty much instantly. So uh, whatever works for you, just figure out what is the right balance of quality versus uh, speed of production. And make sure you are checking on ultra settings periodically, because there are some funky shader things that can happen that you won't see if you're on medium. All right, well, that's all you're going to need to get a basic uh, Unity VR setup and to follow along with my future projects. The first one I'll be doing will be teaching you a little bit about inputs in VR games, and we're going to try and do something new in every episode. So in the next one, we're going to make literal finger guns, as in guns you shoot by making finger guns with your hand and moving your thumbs down and forth or back and forth like the hammer of a gun. So if you'd like to see that, go ahead and click on the next video, or if you just want to learn more about Unity inputs in general. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.